Hi guys, Butch Brown here again. You might know me most or best of all by using the uh, Huddleston Deluxe. This one here is the 10 inch. This is the original 8 inch. Uh, these are some of the modifications that I do with this bait and what I've done over the years. Being as I was pretty much the, one of the first people, if not the first person to get this bait, I, I played with it an awful lot. And one, the most important one of all, is the way that I rigged the hook in the head. I like to use a crimp with seven strand line and I use a size one hook. It's a VMC hook. The reason I use this hook is because I can make this little bend with one of the barbs in the back. It's a wide hook and it's got a big barb in the back. And the big barb in the back sticks in the fish when it comes up and throws the baits. And the reason I rig it this way is because I have a video of me losing five double digit bass in a row on a single hook. And then after that happened and I had the fish hooked really good in the corner and it jumped by the boat, threw the bait out, and the fifth one, I got pissed off and I cut the hook off and then I rigged it this way and then I landed the next 10 pounder that bit. And since that day, I never went back. I've used other hooks, but the problem with, that I found with those is the barb that's under here is very, very small. So when I hook those fish, it goes in, but when they come up and they throw the bait, or, or throw the bait out of the water, or try to get it away from them, they, it flies out of their mouth. And I've had a lot of, lot, a lot of experience with uh, losing fish and catching big fish. And this one here, very much in the high percentage range as far as landing them, and I won't, won't change that at all. Definitely a good hook. I cut out the fins. I like that little floppy look. You know, I want it to look natural. That's, that's what I'm gonna do. And all you do is you take a little uh, utility knife like you'd use for a model, hold this out like that, put a little drop of super glue in there, let it set up, and then it'll make the, the fin stick out. I cut in my own gills, and then I trim that out. And one of the biggest tricks that I've never seen anybody talk about when it comes to putting a pipe cleaner inside of a gill, you know, when I look at a lot of them, I think that to myself that they're all fluffy and they stick out and they don't look right, you know, and that's not how fish are. They're always tucked in just like that, super, super clean. But the trick is to take the pipe cleaner and you bend it to fit, then you take a big a bic lighter and then you lightly torch the hairs and then they shrivel down even smaller, but they stay that blood red color, and then they fit in there absolutely perfect, and they look natural. They're not all fluffy and gaudy and gluey and messed up. So I think when you have a bait that looks this good, you need to keep it as natural as possible. I mean, it's just gorgeous. One thing that I do before I go fishing, and I don't have a lighter with me right now, is you see how the eyes after you fish them for a day, they get that little bit of a uh, fog over them. If you just take the lighter real quick and you just hit that, it'll make it nice and shiny and bright and it looks a lot more natural in the water, especially in the clear water conditions. As far as rate of fall is concerned, whether it's a 12 uh, or a 5 or whatever, uh, even if it's a 12, I cut off the hook in the back and I rig it this way. When it comes to the modifications, there's a lot of ways you can make a 12 into an 8. Like if you're fishing 8 to 10 feet of water and a 12 is a little too heavy, you know, you just slit the belly a little bit. There's going to be a weight inside and just trim a little bit and then throw it out and see how you like it. Okay, now it's fine. Just take a little bit of mended or something, hold it tight, close it up, and then you're off and running. When it comes to a zero and you want it to barely, barely sink or a five that you want to get around into a six or a seven, I call it the nickel dime quarter. And I cut them in half, okay? And what I end up doing is I put them right between the pectoral fin here and it fits in really nice and it's flat so it doesn't make the bait bulge out. Now we have uh, these tungsten weights so that is also excellent and, and I think it might be against a lot of cut quarters up. Anyways, they fit in real nice. They don't distort the bait in color because they're not lead. They're silver, just like the tungsten. 
and then adjust your rate of fall the way you want it. Super simple, but the weight should always be put in back here, somewhere between the, the anal and the front of the dorsal. That's, that seems to be where everything gets leveled out. When it comes to the 10 inch, I do the same thing. I cut the fins out. You know, it's just the way I like to do things. I like it natural when it's floating around. Those are the gills that are cut in it. Nice and clean, you know, stealthy. They're not all gaudy. They're not supposed to be protruding past here. It's supposed to look like it's, it's sort of breathing. This particular bait, I open the mouth a little bit and that's, that's real easy to do. You know, you just, you just have to cut it with the X-Acto knife carefully and then I end up gluing this little bit of, if you look inside there, that's the uh, rubber that you would use around the screen of your uh, house. You can get it at Home Depot. And then I glue that in there so that it keeps the mouth open a little bit. This hook right here is not a VMC. This hook right here is a Gamagatsu. And the reason it's a Gamagatsu is because now when you get into something that's a 2 watt Gamagatsu, it has a bigger barb, okay? Their size ones and, and one aughts don't have a bar, big barb, so that's why they would throw these baits out. So now I go with this, it still has the wide gap, you know, and what I have to do here to bend this down is I have to actually take a little mini torch and, and put it right here in order to bend this properly. And then that just ends up tucking right under the skin, just like that. I will paint these hooks. I will match the color of the back of this onto the hook, but not on the barbs, not past here, but I'll go ahead and, and add a little color to this to mat that matches and put a little bit of flake on it. 60 pound seven strand, A2 sleeve. And as you can see this one here, it's already been bit and it's been bit right on the head just like I like it because very seldom you'll never see the head of a trout sticking out of a bass's throat. It's always the tail. So if you're looking for the biggest fish around, he's going to eat it head first. He's going to swallow it just like a noodle. And if you got a lot of little fish in the lake that are hitting the back, that, that's strictly up to you. But I'm, I'm a trophy bass fisherman and I'm looking for a big bite. So if, if they're just hitting it back here, uh, I'm not interested. The tougher the fishing gets for me, and the clearer the water gets, the more anal I get when it comes to doing modifications. So those are just some tips with the Huddleston. As far as rods are concerned with this kind of bait, eight foot, heavy rod. This one here happens to be a uh, dome driver, which is made by Depths. And there's a lot of rods out there on the market so many that are so nice and it's sort of what you can afford. The reel here is that Trank. It's excellent. Still with these baits right here, I never exceed 20 pound line. Seaguar, Brazex. I buy the thousand yard spools. I make sure it's fresh and clean and I don't have any problems with it. So that's me. That's what I do. Those are my modifications. Hope that helps. See ya.